in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed We're here for an encounter. Give me an encounter. Give me an encounter in the name of Jesus. Let the weight of your glory fall. Let it cover all the earth. Let the weight of your glory fall. It's a powerful prayer. Let it cover all the earth. Let the weight of your glory fall. Let it cover all Let it cover all the earth. Let it cover all the earth. Let it cover all the earth. Let it cover our lives, oh God. Let it cover all the earth. Adonai, Lamb of God, you are worthy, worthy of my prayer. King of kings, you're the Lord of lords. Let your kingdom reign in us. Adonai. So I pray tonight and forever. Adonai. Let your kingdom come. Remains our prayer. Let your kingdom come. Yeah. Let your kingdom reign. Let your kingdom reign. Let it rain, let it rain, would you open the floodgates of heaven, let it rain, let it rain, let it rain, 
Amen. Please be seated. God bless you. We thank the Lord for the opportunity that he provides for us week after week to learn. Um, let me speak especially for those of us who are here. Be very careful so that we never get to points where we become too familiar with the dealings of God. You know, sometimes the Bible says knowledge can puff up. That means that when you get to a point where truly in experience you understand the ways of God chances are that you can plateau at a dimension in the spirit and believe that that is all there is in the pursuit and the knowledge of God and it's not it's not a state that may be done intentionally usually the bible calls it the pride of life the pride of life is different from pride. The pride of life is the self-glorification that comes in the face of obvious results. If you don't have results, you cannot have the pride of life. You can have pride, but not the pride of life. And I know that God has helped us and we have to be very careful so that we are not lost in the folly of achievements. Achievements are important, but they can be very destructive. Very destructive. Hallelujah. And so it's important that our hearts continue to remain malleable and open. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I want to teach on something very powerful. I, I believe with all my heart. Um, if we're not able to finish it tonight, we can continue um, perhaps after the miracle service. But, um, you know, we've been discussing along the lines of our convictions about God and the methodology. Please, I want you to listen very carefully. There is a formula for knowing God. That means that the pathway to the knowledge of God is not one that is dependent on creativity. I've taught you and it will, I will continue to repeat it again and again. That when it has to do with your walking with God, creativity is not required. What is required is obedience and alignment. You are not at liberty to choose your pathway. You are not at liberty to choose your formula. It is not given to a man to choose how he wants to know God. That privilege was never given to the saints. At no time was any man given the privilege to invent his way of knowing God. Are we together? Creativity only becomes useful when that kingly dimension, when it has to do with the revelation to creation now, to creation that's where creativity comes as one of the doorways to manifesting dominion but as far as our work with God and our spiritual growth is concerned we are not given the liberty to choose the pathway the Bible says ask for the ancient path and when you find it walk in it that means that your creativity is not required I say this because the man, please listen, man is like, is like a raw material. Are we together? And there is a process that God leads man through. And the object, what man should become, is already known in the heart of the father. Are we together? And the Bible does not even hide it. He already tells us who and what we should be like. That means at the end of our journey, we should become like an embodiment that is personified in Jesus the Christ. Are we together now? So you pass a product from one end of the, the machine or whatever it is, and then you already have an expectation that if done well, this is what should happen. 
when a caterer or a chef gets to the kitchen to cook, he or she already has an idea, are we together, of what the meal should become. There is nobody who cooks properly and then does not have an idea and in many regards a clear picture of what the meal should become. You don't have to wait for the food to cook to know what it should be. From the start, you already know. Are we together? Now, many people can be with you in the kitchen there and not exactly know what, because of the kind of combination. But at the end, you must know what you should be. When a pilot is about to fly an airplane from one place to another, the pilot, although the pilot may not see where he's going most of the time, the pilot already knows that I'm flying from Lagos to Abuja. I'm flying from Lagos to Kaduna and so on and so forth. It is not only God that wants to, that should know what we should be. Even the be should have an idea of what he should become. Transformation is almost impossible when there is no reference. You cannot become nothing. So your transformation must be based on a reference. I can tell you why many believers do not grow. Because one, we are ignorant of the methodologies of growth. Number two, we do not even have an idea we know in theory that we should be like, like telling me that I should be, I should be like um, so, 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 and so person. And now I don't know that person. So how can I know what, if you tell me to dress, promise, please stand. If you tell me to dress like promise, right? I will have to come. I will have to see him and see how he dressed and then try to replicate the dressing. Are we together? But if I have not been able to see promise, I do not know him. It's going to be difficult for me. It's a standard that is almost impossible. Not because the raw materials are out of reach, but there is no reference. So the Bible says, looking up to Jesus. And he calls Jesus, not just Savior. Jesus has many names in the Bible. And one of the names, as far as our transformation is concerned, is the author and the finisher of our faith. Meaning that when you come into the faith life, the kingdom life, your gaze should continually be on Jesus. To refuse to be distracted by the vicissitudes of life and the things that can stem out of nowhere. To set your gaze and focus on Jesus Christ. And the Bible says that now the Lord is that spirit, right? He says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Then the Bible goes further to say, now we all, with unveiled face, beholding him, not them, not it. Money is it. Fame is it. Are we together? Promotion is it. The Bible says, don't behold it. You will get it, but the object of your focus is beholding him. As in a mirror, it says we are changed from one dimension of glory to the other. Ever increasing glory. Even as by the spirit of the Lord. So the moment I set my gaze on Jesus Christ, no matter what it is that happens once my gaze is fixed on him, there is an assurance that eventually I will begin to look like the one that I'm gazing at. And as far as I've read my Bible, I do not see anything in Jesus that is not de desirable by men. Is it the crown upon his head? Is it the brightness of his glory? Is it the majesty that surrounds his throne? The Bible says, if I look at it, you know, we want the things that are on, in and around Jesus. And we want to get them looking away from him. Focusing on those things. The throne room is a place of wealth and abundance. The throne room is a place of majesty and splendor. 
The throne room is a place of excellence. The throne room is a place of power. And so when I fix my eyes on Jesus, sooner or later you find out that you are looking at a man, but then you are becoming him. But not just him generically. You are becoming every dimension of him you are seeing. Are we together? So I fix my eyes on Jesus and suddenly something begins to happen to my finances. I fix my eyes on Jesus. Something begins to happen to my influence. I fix my eyes on Jesus. Something begins to happen to my understanding. I fix my eyes on Jesus. Something begins to happen to my authority. He says, looking up to Jesus. And if you do not have an idea of who that Jesus is, then it is dangerous because there are many things. If no one ever tried to be Jesus or God in the Bible, it would be easy. But now there are many gods in the Bible and there are many saviors, supposedly. That means if you don't know the one you are looking for, someone else can substitute him and say, I am God. And you will innocently look up to that person or that thing, believing you are looking at God. And you will be changed into that thing. It's only that at the end, you will look at your life and say, this was not how I started. There will be no representation of beauty and glory in your life. Are we together? So pray a prayer before I start. Open my eyes, O Lord. Grant me the miracle of open eyes. open my eyes to see a man cannot see until your eyes are opened hallelujah listen let me tell you this before we get to the word the more I know God and the more I study scripture the more I know what our problem is as men let me tell you one of the major problems of men. We think revelation is something you get. Are we together? We know that our lives are dependent on the light we have. There is no place in scripture where a man was instructed to pursue light. Everywhere in scripture is light coming. Listen very carefully. For as long as you believe you have the power to get light, then the light of God will never come. These truths that we teach, they are very exact. It's a body of spiritual knowledge that is given to you. Don't forget this scripture. A man can receive nothing. A man can receive nothing. Receive nothing until it is given. What God does not send to you from heaven can never enter your hand. So, th there's no point seeking around. Your assignment, when the Bible says seek and you will find, the idea is not to go around. The word seek there in its root word is not to search as it were. It's really the word position yourself. It's more of a posture than it is of a Searching. There are things you can never see by studies. No. This is beyond the realm of education. This is beyond the realm of intellect. Although your intellect will participate in communicating it, but it does not come from the realm of intellect. There is a wisdom that is Sophia, human wisdom. It's a product of age and your exposure to science. But there is a wisdom that comes from above. Are we together now? So I, I, I need you to understand that these spiritual things are not necessarily things that you learn. True revelation comes. You are made a partaker. You fellowship with that mystery. It's a fellowship. You are called into it. 
That's the reason why when you communicate that wisdom, the dimension of this is ancient, is older than you, predates you, predates your Christian experience, and even predates your level of spiritual exposure. It tells you that wisdom is coming from a realm that is older, higher, and more superior than you. So really, the prayer is not to, to search around. The prayer is to position yourself so that that light can come to you. But when that light comes to you and you receive it, according to the authority of scripture, the Bible says you must arise and shine if that light comes. You can know when the light has come by the possibilities that are now captured in your life. I will continue to teach us that our lives, not necessarily immediately, but our lives with time. And that time is not forever. And that time is not your lifetime. Your lifetime is too long. With time. Because we operate by times and seasons, it becomes unfair to expect everything to happen in your life in one day. No. You are not living in the realm of eternity. You are living in the realm of time. So many things in your life are time dependent. They are time dependent for three reasons. One, there is a spiritual law called the law of process. And so there are things in life that the speed has already been regulated by God. Your being serious with God or not cannot increase the speed. It will happen within that time. Then there, there is time that is regulated that is based on your insight and obedience. So you can slow down and increase that pace of achievement based on the insight that comes to you and the application of that truth. And then of course, time can be regulated based on the hindrances, the spiritual hindrances. Are we together? Yes. And the spiritual hindrances are only three. Number one, covenants. Number two, disobedience. Number three, um, what's the third one? Demonic attack. The devil can hinder you. I desire to come to you once and again, but Satan hindered us. So Satan can hinder men. So I don't expect that Pastor Femi in one day on hearing the truth of scripture, no matter how accurate, I do not expect you to enter into the experiential fullness of everything overnight. In fact, in fact, if that happens to you, it's proof that something went wrong. And Jesus grew in wisdom, in stature, in favor with God and with men. Are we together? Ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me. You would have just said all over the earth, but he broke it into dimensions. Jerusalem, Samaria, Judea, and to the utmost part of the earth. So it's very, very important. But let me submit to you. Ask any man that has been granted access to the spirit of revelation. If they are honest enough with you, they will tell you it did not come from the abundance of the study of scripture. The study of scripture is important. It helps to prime your spirit man like you prime a pump. But the real revelation comes from God to you. It comes as light and then depends on the quality of your mental enlightenment to break it down into the truths that that light communicates. God does not speak English. God does not speak Greek. He doesn't speak French. He doesn't speak Spanish or Hausa or English. He speaks light. His language is light. Are we together? Yes. And the only faculty of your tripartite being that can receive light is your spirit man. So when that light comes upon your spirit man, you have it, 
but then it is not useful to you being locked up in the realm of the spirit and interfacing your spirit and your body where it is needed. Remember, the earth realm is where all these spiritual realities are required. They are not just required to remain in the realm of the spirit. Otherwise, there will be no need for transformation. Once that light comes upon you, that's enough. But you need it translated here and now. Are we together? And that technology of transfer is what we must learn. The eyes of your understanding being flooded with light that you may know. So you begin to have understanding. And when you have understanding, I've taught you that this body does not have power on its own. Are we together? When your spirit leaves your body, you are called dead. Dead means that your body is inactive. So the body is a slave somewhat. Or better still, the body is an executor. The assignment of the body is to execute the conclusions of your spirit, your soul. Whatever your body decides, I mean whatever your spirit man decides, or whatever is decided in the solical realm, your body is now authorized to execute it. So if my body continues to go to region and continues to capture experiences that are destructive to the health of my life and my destiny, the problem is not the body. The problem is that something is happening in the realm of the spirit. And if you are a believer, then the problem is not from your spirit man. The problem is from the solical realm. That's where the battle is now. Why? Because he that is joined to Christ is one spirit. Are, are you getting this? Listen, what I'm showing you now, are, these are the fundamentals of Christianity. It's important that you know them. It's amazing how many believers get born again and they're absolutely clueless about the faith life. And we preachers have a lot of repentance to do in terms of the miscommunication of truths. Because we do not guide believers methodically. We just randomly bring truths anyhow. And so they continue to receive truths that are not progressive. There is no synergy in their growth. They cannot connect the usefulness of a revelation to another experience. So they have many experiences, but they are disjointed. I can't see the relevance of this topic to this one. There should be a sequence. Are we together? Yes. There should be a sequence to your spiritual growth. That means that, come my dear, that means I should be able to teach you something now. And then you come. You should hold her hands. You should be able to connect what I taught you. Are we together? Like a ladder. It should lead you to the next, you stand here, level of life. And then I should connect you. This is how growth happens. If your truths are not sequential, you will get a lot of spiritual information, but not coordinated enough to reveal Christ in your life. This is the tragedy of many believers. So when I switch on your laptop, I see many sermons. I see many topics. I see many um, exegesis of scripture. Theological dissertations that have come from different people, different schools of ministry, and so on and so forth. And on the abundance of those information, you can pride yourself to believe you are growing. But the problem is that truths were supplied, but not sequentially arranged. Are we together? So somewhere in your spiritual life, they taught you about prosperity. You don't know where it fits in the graph. Somewhere in your spiritual life, they taught you about character. Somewhere in your spiritual life, they taught you about service in the house of God. Are we together? Somewhere, come, in your spiritual life, they taught you about demonology, deliverance, warfare. Somewhere in your spiritual life, they taught you about prayer. Are, 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 you, are you following me now? Somewhere in your spiritual life, they taught you about whatever it is. Now, these informations are all useful. But you find out that you have them, yet your life does not testify that you have light. The problem 
is not the scarceness of light. The problem is the sequential arrangement of truth. Notice how Jesus began to teach the people. Jesus officially started his mentorship with what we call the Beatitudes. It was an exe exegesis on the kingdom life. Gradually, he began to lead them. Then he started getting deeper. He got to a point that was so deep, people ran away. And he said, will you also go? He said, to whom shall we go? You alone have the words of life. By the time we get to John 14, 15, he's now introducing the Holy Spirit. Never did he introduce the Holy Spirit before that time. Then he got to a point where Jesus himself was almost frustrated. He said, I have many things to tell you, but ye cannot capacity capacity you don't have the capacity to bear them he says how be it no cause for concern when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you he didn't say he will give you truth many people want to get truth they don't want to be guided in truth listen carefully you can get truth but when you are guided you are shown the sequential arrangement of truth in a way and manner that can stamp the gates of hell. This is where the problem is. There is almost nothing you will tell an average believer that he's hearing for the first time. It may just be in a more, with more theological accuracy or with more intellectual prowess. But the central thought is almost always known. Yet our results, our lives are not looking for new things. Our lives are looking for a rearrangement, a sequential arrangement. Something you knew before prosperity is why prosperity does not bless you. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Something that you should not hear. There, there are messages that you were supposed to hear first before hearing about success. And since you did not hear it, what is now light has turned to a sword that is killing you. It is for this cause that he gave unto some apostles and prophets. Are we together? And evangelists and pastors and teachers. Are we together now? And then the Bible says, for the equipping, the perfecting. The word perfecting here is the maturing of the saints. When you give birth to a baby, a number of us here have children. At the back, we have our lovely children they are enjoying the comfort of the first days and months of their lives now only a wicked mother will give birth to a child and carry stock fish and put it in the mouth of that child or carry um, cow tail are we together it doesn't mean cow tail is destructive to someone else, that's an answered prayer. At a level, you will sit down and pray and God will supply. But now, cow tail will be required in that baby's life. But somewhere. But now, when you give the child cow tail, you give the child every kind of thing, you will soon find out that your child is dead. What killed the child? Food. Food. Did you ever learn that food can kill? It's not only poison that kills. It is not only wrong things that kill. Good things, not arranged sequentially, can kill. The prosperity of fools shall destroy them. It is not the prosperity. It's that that guy was a fool. He needed to be wise first. So you, the word of God that was allocated to translate him from the realm of foolishness to wisdom. And what is wisdom? The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So you taught that guy about prosperity and you did not inculcate in him the fear of God. You watch what he would do to his mother or father when the money comes. What I'm sharing is powerful. This is not even my message. I, I don't know how I got here. But this is powerful. Sometimes the Lord just distracts us like that to speak to people. It can be a prophetic word for someone. That look, 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 look. 
your journey of ever learning, your journey of priding yourself with the vastness of spiritual information will soon frustrate you. Because you will find out that someone does not have one tenth of your knowledge, but the little he has was so sequentially arranged. His life will show that he's growing properly. So the average church member doesn't even carry a Bible again. What's the point? Open to the book of First John. He says, we, I know this is the record. Look, look at the person who is talking. He daily loads us with benefits. The person who is talking now does not have transport back home. Now, I'm, I'm not talking of initial. I th don't ever blame any Christian when it does not have results from the instance. It is okay and it is normal. But when you have dwelt around the place of light for a while and your life refuses to bear that witness, then it's proof that something is wrong. And we can easily diagnose the problem. Number one will be to check in the area of ignorance. If we find out that ignorance is not the problem, then number two, we will check the quality of the information. Be careful lest what you call light be darkness. So you can call darkness light. Isaiah chapter 9, when you read, I think verse 2 or thereabout, I can't remember. It says, the people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. Until the great light came, they didn't even know that what they were walking in is called darkness. It says that they who were of the valley of the shadow of death, upon them a light has come. We can be galloping in a lot of ignorance justified either by science or culture, etc., and believe that based on the abundance of this information, we have light. There is the true light that lighted every man. There are other lights that cannot light any man. They can light other things, but they can't light men. Animals have a principle that they work with. Is that true? Most of the principles that the animals work with are not applicable to men. The principle the animals work with is light. But that light cannot light any man. In their world and in their kingdom and in their sphere of reality. Remember, all power belongs to God. So the principle there is not an invention of science. It is God's allocation that helps the animal kingdom to also behave well. But because we are the highest of God's creation, many of those truths, they are truths, but not applicable to us. There are some of those truths that are applicable to us. That's why God punishes foolish men by sending them back to the animal kingdom. He said, go and study my ways as given to the ants. You are a lazy man. You are a sluggard. You are reducing yourself through laziness. So I refer you to a lower dimension of my kingdom. Study the ants. That they do not have a king. They do not have this kind of organization. So when you study, you come back. Every time men refused to learn the laws of their realm, they were degraded. Nebuchadnezzar was turned into what? What was he turned into? For seven years, only his brain was left the brain of a man, but every other thing was that of a beast. And there was a lesson he refused to learn as a man. So when he became a beast, he learned that lesson. At the end of seven years, Nebuchadnezzar wrote a sermon you should pay attention to. He exalted the name of the Lord. Are we together now? They know not, neither will they understand. 82 and verse 5 of Psalms. They know not, neither will they understand. It says they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. The next verse says, have I not said, or I have said, ye are gods and all of you, not some, all of you are children of the most high. The next verse is a tragedy. It says, but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes. 
So the tragedy, please hear me again. Sometimes, there are times that it's just plain ignorance. Are we together? But there are times that it is not ignorance. It is the inability to sequentially arrange truth. Many years ago, the Lord did something in my life. It's a personal dealing, so it's not something that you can build a doctrine out of. Um, the Lord prohibited me from studying my Bible for one week, complete one week. That's why I said it's a personal dealing. Yours may be an attack. Don't mistake in that what that it may be the same thing because God did not tell you. Yours is laxity. That's why I said it's a personalized dealing. Satan uses words to deceive men. Ye are clean through the word that I've spoken to you. For one week, I did not read my Bible. Not because I didn't want to. I didn't understand the morale of the dealing until I was done. And this was the whole object behind it. The, the, the entire focus, the entire objective behind it was to bring me to a point where I would realize that I was ever learning but never coming in experience to the knowledge of the truth. Are we together? So I was getting, you know, those days, well, now we're still passionate about God, but there's something about the journey of a believer. It's like marathon. Once they blow the whistle on your mark, get set, ready, Sometimes you are even, your, your blood is as hot as whatever. Go! And you see someone running as if that is going to stop just at the door. So that zeal, that fire, Greek, this concordance, lexicon, you know, just study anything. Once you see a strange word, ah, pneumatology, okay? This is, I should add this very quickly. Homenetics, homiletics. Ah. So we were just learning things that were just scattered revelation, spiritual but scattered. And the rate of change versus the, the effort was not commensurate. And it was a call for concern. And so God was trying to save me trouble. I would have been in big trouble now. Let me tell you why many Christians are angry and don't believe that others are using God's power entirely. I'll tell you why. They are aware of the effort that was put in to arrive, to, to take one step. It's like they did a labor of five years. So when they see you soaring in the spirit, they say something is wrong. Something is wrong. I started learning 10 years, 7 years, 5 years ago, and you just came, and right now in 2 years, you are in this level. Not so. One of the greatest blessings that can happen to you is that when you are born again, God plants you under an anointing and plants you under a grace that sustains enough spiritual intelligence, enough balance. Huh? Spiritual intelligence and balance. These two things. Grace and truth. When it is grace alone, you are in trouble. When it is truth alone, you are still in trouble. It is full of grace and truth. So when God plants you under a ministry or under a man of God, many of us, the real tragedy in your life was not the attack that came from your foundation. The real tragedy, now I say that respectfully, was probably the spiritual system you were planted in when you got born again. Because your zeal made your heart open for any information. Unfortunately, many of us received chaps. It didn't kill you, but you were not healthy either. Because the prodigal son ate the food of, of pigs. He didn't die, but you can't say he was healthy. That's how it is spiritually. Please listen very carefully. Shepherds can destroy people. How did Moses find a wife? Read your Bible. It was shepherds that came to drive the women. Remember, the family where Moses' wife came from, they were shepherds. The women would come to feed their cattle, and those shepherds would come to drive them and fetch water 
and Moses came and beat the living daylight out of those people. It is important. There are shepherds that watch their flock by night. But there are shepherds that kill their flocks. He said, I will give you pastors after my own heart. Please listen to this because tomorrow you will be the one mentoring a lot of people. Spiritual growth is a school. It's a school with an exact curriculum. That God will help you. The sequential revelation of truth matters. It does. I'm telling you this. There are many things we know about God that are wrong. There are many things we don't know about God that should be known. The dimension of breakthrough you desire requires a certain kind of revelation. Light is the currency that we use to purchase spiritual realities. I used to think it's faith, but it's not faith. Faith is simply the credit card that you use. But what really pays for it is light. No. It, from the abundance of these things, then you will know who God is. And you can worship him in spirit and in truth. There are things you can know about God that makes you unbendable, immovable. Nobody comes to sway you toe and fro with every wind of doctrine and the slight of men. Wherein they lie to deceive, the Bible says. It's important. Now, before I get to my sermon, this is, this, I can't believe that I've still not started preaching. Look at these people. Please start. Look at these people. Which dimension of your spiritual life has not been arranged accurately? There are people who are not even born again because you check the truths that they have. Salvation is not part of it. They never got born again. They were just born in a family. Just because you were not in a beer parlor does not mean you are saved. So they started like that. They started playing keyboard in church like this guy is playing now. From keyboard, he became um, assistant music director. Are you seeing that now? From assistant music director, you became music director. From music director, you became deacon. Huh? Yes. From deacon, they open a branch just when you are graduating. And they call you pastor, whoever you are. Now, the truth is that whether or not you think you have grown, according to God's order, there is a pattern. God is a God of patterns. He's not just a God of motion. He's a God of patterns. How you move and how you grow will determine whether you will become that which is in his heart. Now, this is the interesting thing about God. Even when you think you have been working with God, like we arrogantly say, for 15 years, the day he reveals himself to you, he will rearrange your life back. And sometimes when he, he rearranges your life by trying your works with fire, it's in the Bible. That means you can see a lot of achievement and the fire of his light will come. And all that will be left is your true state. That means God will say, you men say you are in level 5, level 15. But really, you are just at level 1. Now, you are at liberty to choose whether you will pay the price unashamedly to start properly with God. Or allow the ego that you have to just make you continue. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You are the key. There is none other. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You are the king. There is none other. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. So men can call you MOG. Men can call you deacon. Men can call you this and that. But the truth is that 
if you are not growing and building according to pattern, I hate to be a bearer of bad news, but let me tell you, you are only wasting your time. When God comes, he never continues from where, what you were doing. Look at what happened to Abraham. When he met Abraham at all of the Chaldeans, this was his instruction. Abraham, come out of thy father's house and out of thy kindred. I hope you know at that time, Abraham was not a failure. At least he had some results. He had 200 plus servants. He had cattle. He had a number of things. And said, Abraham, don't think I'm coming to continue from there. I will start with you again. Let's start that journey. This is what brought some of you here. Some of you are already pastors, men of God, leaders. Some of you here were youth pastors before you got admission. You carried youth pastor mentality and just came and God said, no way, come and sit down. And if you are not careful, and please, every pastor here, these, these are not vice. Don't just see someone come because they said he came from so-so-so ministry or so-so-so parish. And in that parish, he was the music director. And he just said, okay, no problem, come and sit down and play keyboard. And the guy comes with that celebrity mindset. Because in his church, spiritual growth is not necessary. In his church, just attendance and loyalty is what is, and, and sowing of seeds here and there. But now, this requirement requires you to sit down. Many celebrities get born again. I mean, secular celebrities now. They get born again and come to church. And then we just transfer their fame of the world and just add anointing on it. Not God. You are joking. Not God. Mm -mm. Not God. Not the God of the heavens. When you come, everybody starts from class one. Even Jesus, when he came, the father didn't even pity Jesus to say, okay, you are Jesus. I mean, this is me. He started right from scratch. At age 12, I imagine what was in the mind of Jesus when he was reading himself. Thou shalt love the Lord your God. And the rabbis were saying, I hope you are learning it. And he was just watching. The force that holds what he's reading. And not even Jesus was promoted like that. He had to wait. At age 12, he was learning. What do you think you are to just jump the steps? Favor does not jump steps. So you hear that? Because our idea of shortcut must be balanced. Favor is shortcut, yes. But it is not shortcut to alienate you from information that you hear. Favor is a system that was designed to help you because men do not start life in an ideal way. Please listen. If I was teaching our precious school of ministry students the graph of life yesterday, the good old graph of life, if you are not part of school of ministry, join even if it's just because of that. If you don't change after that teaching, I don't know what will change you in this life again. The graph of life. Are we together? If I get born again 40 years, how many of you know that I am blessed, but that's a disadvantage with respect to earthly time. We don't have forever on earth. Now, I got born again 40 years and someone got born again at age three. Who has more advantage than the other? And don't say we are all equal. We are not equal. This guy has time. Time. At age three, born again. At age four, filled with the Holy Ghost. At age five, being mentored by a visionary father. When that child becomes 12, he is now you of 70 at age 12. Now, listen, let me show you. Listen, listen, don't just laugh. Let me show you the relevance of things like mercy, favor. These things are not just random things. God looked at the way man works on earth and said, if I don't add these other things, man will never become the fullness of God's grace. So here and there, he interjects your work with life with these acts of his benevolence to help you. This is where things like favor are important. If you don't have favor in life, you, you will succeed. The problem is you only succeed if your life is ideal. 
Nobody's life is ideal, including Jesus. They hid Jesus because somebody wanted to kill him. Until Herod died. And he said, okay, now you can go. There were things he would have been doing within that time. Mephibosheth, because a midwife, I, 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 am I alone in this place this night? Mephibosheth was a sincere person. The midwife that held him was careless. And because of her carelessness, that guy fell down and broke his leg. Now, sorry will not solve that problem. Because there are things he will never be able to do. So how does God help this man's destiny? By allowing him to live life the way it should be? No. So God introduces things like mercy. Thou shall arise and have mercy. And looks at him, God. And he knows. He looks at the way man should go. And looks at the way man goes. This guy was called to be a prophet to the nations. This is his destiny. Are we together now? According to God's predeterminate counsel, the destiny of this gentleman, like Jeremiah, is to be a prophet to the nations. But it so happened that the womb that would give birth to him married an unbeliever. Now, listen to this. I hope you know this is not his fault. It's just that the woman that should marry him because she didn't have enlightenment or she was deceived or misled, now God married to a non-Christian. You, you, you get what I'm saying? Now, this guy, according to the blueprint of his life, he should have finished his assignment at 70 if he starts his journey at 1. But because of what he has to fight, an extra battle that was not in the original plan is now here. And that battle is the battle of grafting him out of this family first. And listen to me, sometimes this gentleman has no legitimate ground to leave the house until he gets to university. So his destiny will have to wait till, what, what age do you get to university? 17. This guy has to wait for 17 years. Are you getting the point now? Because according to God's blueprint, that is the safest way for him to live. If he lives in a way that they, they can kill him. And God, for the sake of his destiny, will not allow him that. Now, while he's waiting for that 17 years, his brain is not closed. He's learning a lot of things he must undo. Because you cannot be in my house and not serve my God. So while he's bowing down and doing all of these things, heaven is bleeding. Because according to the blueprint, by age five, this guy should already be seeing visions. But now, the, and Satan, when he peeps there, Satan will make sure that the clerics isolate this guy and further indoctrinate him to complicate destiny. I show you why it's dangerous. It's not enough to be saved. Where you are planted can determine how you grow. Please, parents, let me tell you something. And even those who have children now, don't sit down and say it does not matter where they hear truth. It matters. Sit down and waste your child's time hearing nonsense, wasting his time. At the end of it, you'll find out that there is no sequential growth. Please listen. I'm telling you, I'm teaching something entirely different. This is my note. I've not even started. But if this is how the Holy Ghost wants it this night, I think it, this, is, this is a deep and mature teaching. I'm, I'm correcting the reason why the Christian experience of many believers is just, is just a buffet of frustration. I agree that an area or two of your life may be trusting, be needing the hand of God. But when every area fails, something is wrong. This one is no longer the law of process. Apostle, nothing is working in my life. I've been a Christian from 2001. I tell you where the problem is. I tell you and the problem is not only an attack an attack looks like the obvious reason but i'm telling you now there is no prophet no pastor no apostle that will just pray over the issue of attack alone and then your life changes no you want holistic growth we must do the diagnosis tonight to know what is wrong back to my story this gentleman is loitering somewhere very far from god and far from destiny are we together? 
Now she gets to the university after 17 years. 17 years has been wasted. When he gets there now, the devil will try to do all kinds of things. For instance, the devil can ensure that his first CGPA is 1.2. 1. point what? Who will listen to God under that kind of condition? The pressure from life will make him say, do you know what? Let me find a fellowship where in 30 minutes they finished. Now, it doesn't mean, please, I hope you understand that I'm not being sarcastic to any. The fire on this guy's destiny is being quenched because you, you call it circumstances, but these are intentional orchestrations. And then this gentleman one day, that's why inviting people to the house of God, if you are sure of the quality of what you are receiving, then it is evil to not invite people. This is not the issue of evangelism. This is you being an extension of God's mercy. Because the person you will be inviting, you think you are just inviting, you don't know you are acting prophecy. Imagine that this guy now is in Zaria, in this situation. Imagine what heaven will do to you as the person who holds his hand to insist he comes to Koinonia. You thought you just invited a man, but you literally shifted a destiny. Literally. Because of one encounter. Are, are you with me this night now? It's very important. Some of you are now seeing. Now, do you know that heaven will rejoice when this gentleman comes? You have invited five, six people. But all of them don't have the same destiny. This guy ordained to be a prophet to the nations. Did you really invite one person? How many people did you invite? He will give you flimsy excuse. uh, excuses. I've not eaten. And the Holy Ghost will say, feed him. And you are like, Holy Spirit, what is all this one? I don't have transport. And you will bring him. Now imagine that you bring him for koinonia and then I'm not ready working for others. The moment you enter, except your feet, something must happen and reduce you back to look like your parents. You can choose to believe what I'm saying. No problem. I don't know who prayed for you before you arrived. But let me tell you sincerely, if you know that there was no salvation in your past. Please hear what I'm saying seriously and pay attention to it. Altars are wicked. They are like time. Nothing can fight them. They will move slowly unperturbed by your pride until they catch up with you. Hallelujah. I heard of a man of God that bought truck, this Dangote truck. They kept advising him to diversify. And that guy carried all his money. I don't know how much that truck is, but it's so expensive. The moment the person bought that truck, I, I, he was coming along, I think Kogi or so, the road. That was how that thing just capsized. It burnt in a way, burnt everything inside and burnt everything about that man. And the guy sat down and was almost killing himself. Who taught you what you know spiritually? Forget about the one Koinonia taught you. What is it resting upon? Because some of you, this is why you are not experiencing the outstretched arm of God. Now, I don't mean, I don't mean I love the body of Christ, but I have to tell you the truth. There are men of God and there are churches that are wonderful, but they are not healthy for a foundation for your spiritual growth. No. The context of what is taught is pungent and dangerous for your spiritual growth. Salt is good. But if you fetch one mudu of rice to cook and you fetch one mudu of salt to cook, is that a blessing? No. There are truths that are like salt. They are sprinkled and it's enough. By the time you carry that truth, the same size of rice and combine everything, you will deal and kill somebody. There are people, the sermons they had is why they never saw the necessity of prayer in their spiritual walk. Are we together? 
they came from a highly intellectual family. And you see people just laugh and say, demons, the only demon you have is a demon in your brain and your mind. And the devil says, wow, this is wonderful. For the child who comes from the church, the house of an evangelist and a prayer warrior, that is a correct sermon. But for you who is coming from a foundation where they wrote your name, when they gave birth to you, while you were a baby, your head was inside water. And they were speaking nonsense to your destiny. And you believe you will just casually say, in Jesus' name, I'm born again. No, sir. The same way you don't say casually money come and it comes. There are systems and there are principles. The same way too, if you are not careful, you can be born again in a ministry that all they see is demons. Did you hear what I said? Everything is demons. And then there is serious trouble because you will never have the enlightened mind that will keep you in victory. Your entire life will be full of warfare and fear because that is the context of the education that you received. So when it's time to be responsible and understand the systems of the kingdom, you will not. So all you will keep doing in your life is to pray. What knowledge should bring to you? You are trying to get it through prayer. Are we together now? When you should learn. When you hear sermons like sermons on destiny helpers, sermons on excellence, the law of honor, you just ignore it and say, all I know is that there is a witch in this family. You will find out that even when the person you have been calling a witch dies, you will celebrate and nothing will change. Because the issue of witch was already settled. But the remaining issues, in fact, the weightier matters that required spiritual enlightenment, the person who mentored you did not call you to see the necessity. It's a blessing to have a good pastor over you. It's a blessing to have a man of God that can draw the boundaries that are relevant to your growth and construct you like a building. I will give you pastors after my heart. This is a mistake we're making in ministry now. We just ordain people anyhow. The moment someone looks handsome, charismatic, can dress well, you just say, come, you are, you are pastor this and that. You arrogantly stand on stage and confuse people. At the end of it, the people don't know what they believe again. It's nine o'clock. Let's pray. We can't hear this kind of thing and just round off. We are going to pray seriously. First and foremost, hold the hands of someone and blast in tongues first to prepare your spirit. Find a neighbor and pray seriously. Prayer is not for prayer warriors. Prayer is for any man who intends to be changed, to be lifted, and to become great in life and destiny. Pray, pray, pray. My Christian experience must be fruitful. I must bear fruit. I must bear fruit. I must bear fruit in my life.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You are going to pray this night for your destiny. You are going to call it by name and declare that in this season, my destiny open, 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 open up. He said, Lo, I come. Please pray. Please pray. Destiny. In the name of Jesus, be open. Shake it, take a paraka to pariketa. Embrata leka paronda shalakata variata. My assignment, my destiny, open up in the name of Jesus. No wasting time, no rambling around. Open up in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me. Outside, are you praying? Make sure you are praying from the depth of your heart. Open up, open up, open up in the name of Jesus. Open up, open up. Open up in the name of Jesus. Open up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Please listen to me. You are going to pray. And you are going to cry to God. And say, Lord, every, every disarrangement of truth in my life that has been responsible for my stunted growth, I pray by the Spirit of God, rearrange my life. Rearrange my destiny. What I have believed wrongly, correct it, oh God. I am open, I'm not a rebel. Let your emphasis be my emphasis. Pray. More than what a man of God said. Arrange my life sequentially. Arrange my destiny sequentially. Who am I to meet in this season? Who must enter my life in this season? Based on your arrangement. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Please don't think you are, you are wasting your time. You are praying seriously. Now, I say this with all humility. Listen. Please listen. Imagine if till now I was still trying to hear God concerning koinonia. Are you seeing now? 
Imagine there are people according to the blueprint of your assignment. You are not supposed to be looking for money now. It, you are supposed to have it already because the next phase of your life is dependent on that supply. There are people right now at, according to God's blueprint, the level of prophetic you should be operating in, it is required for the kind of assignment. But because you are still here, God cannot move with you. Hear me. Hear me. There are ladies, according to God's blueprint, you should be ready for marriage now. Based on the sequence of your destiny. But it's right now, you are getting serious with your life. Hear me. Hear me. There are some of you, according to the sequence of destiny, it's you and your elder brother that should be standing as pillars. But the devil killed your brother from birth. That means you are carrying the burden of two people. You need your grace plus the grace that will come on you else. So when you pray one hour, God will say, add it home. Because you were supposed to pray only an hour. Because there's someone else holding it with you. But he's alive and he's drinking around. And God's agenda must move forward. So you must build stamina to be able to carry it. Listen. Listen to me. Please listen. I'm speaking by the spirit. Don't think I'm just talking anyhow. Listen to me. Please listen. There are families, according to the design of God, you are supposed to be three men. But the devil made sure no man come to that family. It was later on you showed up, sometimes as the last born. And now you have to stand in a position of three men as one man. There are families. It's supposed to be you and your father and your pastor. But now your father did not serve the Lord or your father has died. God will not change his purposes. His plans can change. But his purposes remain eternal. Listen, listen, there are families, according to God's design, you should never even try to say, okay, I'm looking for two or three jobs. Because according to that design, your father should have been responsible to help you with an inheritance. But now the devil hijacked that destiny. And the way you are right now, if you fail, there is no more hope for your family. Because everyone that came to help, the devil took them out of the way. You know it. i like you to pray and say, Lord, I will not fail you. And I will not fail destiny. Is someone praying? Lord, I will not fail you. I will not fail destiny. If it depends on me, then I will not fail. If it depends on me, if it depends on me to change the course of my family, if it depends on me, to enthrone Jesus over my family. If it depends on me, I will not fail. Someone pray. Pray with the picture of your loved ones in your mind. Pray with the picture of your children on your mind. Pray with the picture of your destiny on your mind. If it depends on me, I will not fail. It may take time, but I will not fail. Hallelujah. I wish you people knew that song. Atmosphere, shift now. Huh? You may not know it. I just, I just had that song in my spirit. I will not fail if it depends on me. I think about my life with all humility. And I think about the destinies that would have gone down 
even if I were born again and I refused to answer the call. Listen. The next prayer point. We are praying. Listen. Spirit of the living God, if I am found anywhere that my destiny does not require, turn me around. Bring me back to the place of destiny. Lift your voice and pray. If I found myself anywhere that my destiny does not require, turn me around. Please pray, pray, pray. Align me to destiny. Align me to destiny. Align me to destiny. Geographically. Align me to destiny. Relationally. Align me to destiny. Financially. Allow me to, align me to destiny. Spiritually. Align me to destiny, oh God. Pray that prayer and watch your life change. Align me to destiny. Let me stop rambling around. Bring me to the place, the path of destiny. Hallelujah. Listen, listen. It was never my intention, never my intention to be in Zaria. It would have been the last place for me to think of being at this time. But you see, there's something about destiny. There are people when the devil wants to waste their time, they will get American visa and travel and roam around America. Just because you are making some money does not mean you are in destiny. Look at how God brought some of you here. God carried you from different places. It's destiny. Forget about the story that brought you. Align me to destiny. Let me not find... Listen, let me tell you this. There are people, when the devil wants to destroy their destiny... They will receive certain kinds of promotions. You would think uh, is promotion is not wrong in itself. But they will receive a promotion and become a CEO. And that CEO will not allow them to do and be certain things. Life is more than money. Oh. Life is more than fame. Are we together? Next prayer point. Lord, where am I supposed to have been in destiny that I am not? I pray by the Spirit in this season, take me there. Take me there. I should not be at this level. In ministry, financially, maritally, spiritually, pray by your Spirit. Bring acceleration to my life. There is no more time to waste. The voice of my generation is crying. Speedy manifestation, oh God, of all that pertains to my destiny in this season. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now listen to me. The next prayer point, I will have to teach you a little to understand. Covenants are systems of advantage. Please listen. 
A covenant is more than an agreement. It's a system that provides an advantage in life. Listen to me carefully. You reign in life based on the privilege of the advantage that you have. Are we together now? Yes. Advantage. Every time you see anything that spells an advantage in the Bible, you must study it. Everybody rose based on an advantage. Joshua stood before Jericho helpless like any leader would be except that he was standing on an advantage. It was that advantage that brought the captain of the Lord's army. He said, I am here. Daniel would have died in Babylon except for the advantage he was standing on. And based on that advantage, Gabriel came and said, I am come to give you understanding. And he understood the times that was allocated for the liberation. Abraham was standing on a covenant and so he saw in a vision that God's people would be in captivity for 400 years. Please listen to me. This thing I'm teaching you is a deep teaching. Your destiny will remain on the ground until there is a system of advantage. I repeat, the knowledge of God is not based on covenant, your spiritual growth, but kingdom advancement and the advancement of your life and destiny is based on systems of advantage. Are we together? And there are many systems of advantage. I hope that in the coming weeks, just brace up for the teachings that will come in the coming weeks. Because there are things that we need to learn. There are systems of advantage. Listen to what Haman, when Haman went to his family, his brethren, and Haman told them, he said, look at what Esther did to me. They put their hands on their head. They said, Haman, you are finished. This woman is a Jew. Looked at him and said, whose son are you? Not who trained you. Not what weapons do you have. I need to know what advantage you are carrying to stand before Goliath. When he stood before Goliath, Goliath said, am I a dog? Am I a dog that you stand before me and come with a sling? Are you trying to catch a goat? And David said, you come to me with your spheres and your bows. But I come to you, listen, in a name. Ah, I wish we could deal with this. Because you see, a name in the spirit is a revelation of a dimension of God. God's dimensions are stored in his names. I came with a name. Are we together now? And foolish Goliath, instead of him to ask, are you a Jew? He kept quiet. What do you think made Jericho to close their gates? They said, who are the guys coming to attack us? The moment they said they were Jews, they close the gate. Close it quickly. We know these guys. There is a track record. There is a strange God that works with them. Ah! There are men who there are things they are standing on. And based on those systems of advantage, I tell you, they can fail in other things, not finances. No. They can make the most stupid financial decisions. Yet what they stand upon will bail them out. Have you seen families like that? All their children must be leaders. Must be leaders. It doesn't matter what happens. Whether it's a village school or whatever, the girl must be head girl. The boy must be head boy. In a class of many people, eventually they will be leaders. When you say the J.F. Kennedy family, what comes to your mind? There are families that are a dynasty. It's not just business they were passing. There were platforms. Whether with fraternity with Satan or fraternity with God. But there was a system of advantage. I will never forget. I've always been a very brilliant person. I remember I was in Jess 1. This issue changed my life. I had always been the best student. Effortlessly the best. 
In fact, I didn't know that people used to read during exams. Nobody ever asked me to go and read. If you were in my class, just give up. In terms of position, you are wasting your time. It's not only that I will take first. The gap I will give you will make you not to come near me again. And something happened. When I was in secondary school, the first time I was the best student. The second term, I think I was the best student or so. But the third term, the guy that took third before, the parents moved to living faith. Listen, no. They moved to living faith. It didn't reach three months. They did anointing service for that boy. Straight when he came and wrote exams. When that, now this is not about first or second. I'm just using it to explain something. When the results came out and I looked at my results, I looked at the guy. It, it wasn't, you know, I didn't know what I knew now. You can imagine a small boy. I said, no, something is wrong. Something has to be wrong. Because my best performance was this point. Something has to be wrong. That guy was, his average was just with like five marks. I said, no, there has to be a recalculation. Something is wrong. And then I met him. I said, in the spirit of sportsmanship, congratulations. And he laughed. He told me that they did anointing service for them in living faith. I said, what is living faith? It was later when I understood. I said, ah! I was standing on my braid. He was standing on an altar. <laughs> Listen, sir, let me do this. Come. Tell us your testimony. Now, everybody stand and listen to this testimony. Go ahead. Um, I am a pastor. I was in Mubi before we got transferred to Abuja. Because of the distance and the financial constraint, we decided that my wife would not return back to school. So during uh, the last uh, her second semester exam, she didn't go and... Um, we attended Koinonia, uh, the miracle service uh, last month, and then with the result that she should go back to school. When she returned to school, they uploaded their results. Lo and behold, she had results. And all of the results were A. I mean B. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, you, you, I, I called him out so that he would talk. This is a pastor. She didn't do second semester. Oh. What, what second semester? Semester. Because of, listen, because of financial constraint, which is justifiable. They now came down. He relocated. And then when all of that happened, he now planned, because he had been, had been in touch. So it's not something that we're just talking. I've been in touch. This is not a license for laziness. No. It's just showing you that there are possibilities. That's why I said the prayer I want you to pray now, if I don't teach this, you will not understand it. Woe betides a man who stands alone. Listen, Bishop Oyedeko, listen. One man of God in the south-south, he was about to start ministry. And then he went to Bishop Oyedeko for prayer and advice as, you know, they were releasing him. And Bishop Oyedeko spoke to him in Yoruba. I wish I'm a Yoruba person. He said, never fight alone. That's my advice for you. Never fight alone. I show you why many people continue to fall victims in life. So, the plan was that they will go back and then let the wife now register. Now that God has helped them, things have started changing. I'm explaining the story for you. They now went and said, okay, let's see how far. As they printed results, second semester results, A and B parallel. That's what came out as the wife's result. This man is a pastor. He has a congregation. He's a spiritual father to many. He will not come and mess up his integrity. And he's, this is a father with a wife and children. Listen, it is not to endorse laziness, but it's to let you know that this kingdom is a compendium of possibilities, limited only by your spiritual understanding. God bless you, sir. We're going to round up. 
But let's, we are going to pray this prayer. Systems of advantage. Abraham was an idol worshiper from a place called Or of the Chaldeans. Chaldeans were, were idol worshippers. They were necromancers. When God called him out, his team was not enough. God met him and said, I need to enter a covenant with you. If I just call you and I say, let's go to the promised land, you will still die. I have to provide a platform that becomes the basis of this new order. Are we together? Many of you do not know that the secret to the future, you heard me say it, is in the past. Before you move forward in life, you have to go backwards. Please hear what I'm saying. All these names that we have given this phenomena in life, they are, whether you call it failure at the edge of breakthrough, whether you call it spirit husband, whether you call it spirit wife, whether you call it rise and fall, all those are invented names. That's to tell you many people are having the same experience. That's why they could receive it and understand. The teaching that I did, the mystery of deliverance, part one to four, that message has delivered people until we stand before God to see how many people were delivered. When truths are taught with imbalance, it can destroy. Listen. There are things that God does for the sake of the fathers. There are things that God does for your own sake. Did you hear what I said? There are some of you now, you are in certain levels of blessings and favor. And in the name of honesty, you have nothing to do with it. Maybe your mother used to cook for pastors. Listen, no. Before you were born, your mother just said, me, you am not a woman of God. But all I keep doing is if there is any pastor, I will make sure I cook for them. One day, she cooked for a man who was not a pastor. She cooked for a sister. And he swore a blessing and said, may your children be great. Now, listen. That looks like a pronouncement. It's more than a pronouncement. And now you showed up. And when Satan is supposed to destroy you, between you and the destruction, the pronouncement comes in between you. My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that is gone out of my mouth. The same way, Noah looked at Africa and cursed Africa and said a servant of servants shall you be as born again as we are that curse is still in place today now people are following from America and the rest and I don't mean to insult you but you will see the level of spiritual depravity that is in America the decadence right that when you put sex on phone male of or on a form male or female it's not only male or female that is there now male female and then some others yet in the midst of it you expect god to be angry and stand up and say america your glory has been withdrawn <laughs> every time he wants to do that someone's prayer stands every time the coming of Jesus was about to be delayed. The prayer of Anna the prophetess stood in the realm of the spirit. Maranatha, come, come, come. I told you about my life that my mother prayed a prayer and had an agreement with God. She told the Lord, she said, Lord, my own father was a pastor. He died serving you. He said, please use either my brother her younger brother now, or any of my sons to continue. Let it not be that this spiritual heritage is lost. 
She thought it was just a casual prayer. And then I showed up innocently. But something was a system of advantage. There are some of you today, you don't have any past. You don't have any bad record. It's not because you are a nice person. You are one of the most loose and careless person. But simply because there was an ordinariness upon your life that prevented all sorts of evil from happening to your life because of the destiny attached to you. Let me tell you this. You have to know the systems of advantage that God provided. Are we together? The Yoruba people were given a grace upon their minds. It's a grace God gave that territory. A grace. Now, what I'm teaching you is truth from God's word. The, the Yoruba people as a nation were given many graces. Among them was the grace for the prophetic. The eyes that see. Not necessarily hearing, but the power of sight, which was an extension of intellect. It's a grace. Please listen to me. Let me show you mysteries. Igbo people were given the grace of courage and creativity. It's a grace that was given. That you can drop an Igbo territorially is a grace. Any poor Igbo man you see is a lazy man. Because they already have an advantage. Listen. The north and that includes the middle belt. The grace is the grace of leadership and governance. It's a grace. This is what the northerners take advantage of. They study these things. They don't just come out for election. They know that we are standing on an advantage. These are ordinances, my brothers and my sisters. In Mount Zion, the side of the north, the city of the great king. Are we together now? Leadership. So many times, when God wants you to be a spiritual leader, listen carefully, no matter where you are, in your voyage, you must touch the knot. No matter who you are. Listen carefully. This is where Bishop Oyedeko started from. This, no matter who, he will rout you because you must drink of that grace. How do I explain this thing? Are we together? When you say evil people like money, they don't like money. It is an advantage that has carved out a niche for them. Governance. There are few men of God who now lead the body of Christ who do not have an affiliation with something that brought them to the north. Notice that God, when God wants to announce you in Nigeria, you must touch Lagos. If your feet does not touch Abel Kuta and Lagos, you cannot be global from this country. Whether as a secular artist, I think we'll just end for today. It is those who have the eyes that see, that know. Many of you don't know why God carried you and brought you to Zaria. It's not just because of Koinonia. It is because these are the systems of God. He will bring you and you make contact with the possibility that he planted within that territory. Lift your voice in one minute and say, Lord, the, the systems of advantage that you have provided for me, I walk into it. I walk into it. There is a heritage that we have. A territorial heritage. An intellectual heritage. 
a spiritual heritage. One more time, sing. Oh, Lord, set my life on fire for you. For you. For you. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, set my life in order. Set my life in order for you. Hallelujah. Listen. Please listen. We're rounding up. I want you to get tonight's teaching. Please. I'd like you to give tonight's teaching to anybody you find. And tell him, please. Please. Listen. In fact, you can tell him it's a birthday gift from apostle to you. Take. Listen. This is not the kind of teaching... That you hear tonight and say, wow, wonderful. <clears throat> this is the kind of teaching you will sleep and wake up with. There are many things I have said that you did not hear. But I guarantee you that if you understand what I taught this night, there is no limit to your life. You can take advantage of everything around you. Every territory has an advantage. You can tap into the advantage that comes with it. Your church has an advantage. Your soil has an advantage. Your family has an advantage. I know your father was a herbalist and a priest. But that is the corrupted destiny of a prophet. There is still an advantage that can be seen and can be activated. Hallelujah. This is how we grow in the kingdom. We don't just grow by will. We don't just grow by luck. Listen, let me tell you this. This night, I just chose to show you these are the things that work in the lives of extraordinary people. It's not just that things are working anyhow. No. You see all this anointing, the power of God breaking out anyhow. It's not. There are systems of advantage. Your life must learn it. You must know it. And you must know how to engage it. Every Jew in Israel knows he cannot fear. Born again or not. Meet any Jew. Put any Jew to be a board member of your company. And you watch what starts happening. No matter how foolish the decisions are. The wealthiest people in America today are Jews. The greatest brands in the world today, they are Jews. There is a history to the things we see. 
There is a reason why Boko Haram thrives in the north. They go outside the north, they will fail. North is the seat of governors. There is an advantage in the territory. They know this by divination. The East is always a place associated with wisdom. The Magi, wise men came from the East. It's true. The wickedness came from the seat of governance. Herod wanting to kill Jesus. So it should not surprise you that terrorism springs from the North. The seat of governance. And strangely enough, the place that also looks like the seat of governance is also the place where revival rises. Hmm. That is the reason why you see the moves of God. Ministries like Koinonia. All these things are not, they are not guessings. They are pieces of a divine puzzle. <laughs> are we together? <laughs> Many of you are looking at me dumbfounded. Let's round up by one last prayer. Father, in the name of your son Jesus Christ, reveal to me every advantage that makes for my excelling in life. From scripture, from the ministry that I am under the grace, from Christ himself, the chiefest of all advantages, reveal to me. Let me know what I stand upon and the possibilities that are associated with that covenant. Please pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know why the Holy Spirit decided to move this way? To share this? These are not things I share in a general meeting like this. These are truths that you share when you are talking to leaders. I don't know why God decided to allow this thing. That's why I said, please get it and listen to it. You will think you understood what I said. No. Your spirit man only appreciated what I said. You will need to settle down. Because you will hear something from that message. That will control your results. And open you up to the next season. This is how I live my life. I never stand anywhere in ignorance of the advantage. This world is too wicked. You don't guess your advantage on the battlefront. It's too risky. Tomorrow, I'm on my way to Lagos again. I came back from Kogi State yesterday. There is an advantage I stand upon that gives me security over death. My life is a very risky life. If you live this kind of life and this kind of schedule, and all you say is, I know God will protect us, one day you will land in trouble. I am a giver as a person. Is both an office, a hobby, a desire, and a responsibility. And I know that the way I give is not recommended for an average person. I'm telling you this. You give that way, you will have problems with your wife, your husband, your children. That means there must be an advantage. This is more than financial intelligence. There must be a system provided 
that can allow for that dimension of God to continue unhindered. My work schedule, if you do what I do for two weeks, you will have a health challenge. Sincerely, I'm telling you this. I've been out of this town since Saturday, only returned yesterday, had to rush, come for school of ministry, and all today I've been busy doing a lot of things. I'm here now this night. As soon as I'm done, I'm going to be counseling for over the next maybe two, three hours. Heading back home, barely have time to sleep. Tomorrow, I'm heading to Lagos, straight into the morning session of a meeting. And yet, Tuesday is my birthday. You live like that, something will happen to you. If I've not collapsed, it's not just because I'm wise. There is something you must stand on. There must have been something God told you or God told someone you are under or God connected you to. There has to be something. There are ministries who don't understand this. They are anointed, but they pay every bill by themselves. They never experience help because they have not known how to tap into that advantage. There are some of you, you have never been helped by anybody. You have not lacked, but you don't know what it means to be assisted. Our lives are full of systems of advantage. There was something on Jesus that made Simon of Cyrene to be close by. There was something in Jesus that made Joseph of Arimathea to be willing to bury him in the virgin tomb. Look at me, please. I'm rounding up. I know I'm taking your time. We're rounding up now. Any earthly advantage in your life that seems to have gone, there is a spiritual replacement for it. Listen, let me comfort you. That means whatever your father should be, please, I'm not getting you emotional. If your father here, if you've lost your father, or you've lost your mother, or you've lost any sibling, or you've lost a destiny helper, I'm bringing you a word of hope that every physical thing that they should do, there is a remedy in the spirit. If it does not happen to you, it is because you do not know this dimension of God. That means you are saying, I'm an orphan apostle and the only child, no father, no mother, there is something you can tap into the realm of the spirit that can be almost equal aside from the bodily connection of a father, a mother. Are we together now? There are some of you who lost your physical parents and God carried you and came and planted you in Koinonia here so that you can have the opportunity of receiving what is as real as, I, as fatherhood. That means it is your responsibility to go back to God and say, Lord, because of my faith, I left my loved ones. Now I am in Zaria all by myself. I don't have an earthly father. I don't have an earthly mother. Or I have a father, mother. Some of you here, please don't feel bad. I am rounding up, but I'm speaking by the spirit. Some of you here are single moms. You have your children, something happened, maybe your husband died or ran away. Whatever the story is, it doesn't matter. And humanly speaking, you are supposed to be disadvantaged. But the Bible says, for we know. They don't know, but we know that the kingdom can construct an advantage for you. There are systems of advantage. Apostle, I graduated with a third class. Or I never even had the opportunity to go to school in the first place. And the truth is, at my age, knowledge is not a waste. But sincerely, at my age, the responsibilities around my life may not allow me the privilege of a young person going to go to school again. There is a system of advantage that you can tap into that will lift you and keep you where your contemporaries are. As though you did not have any disadvantage. This is the excellency of walking with God. So this is a word of hope. Don't sit down feeling bad. 
just because your husband died or your wife died or your mother died most times we cry for two reasons number one because of the earthly connection oh how he loved him that's what they said when jesus wept at the grave of lazarus but the second reason is because of the space and the vacuum that their absence creates and i'm speaking to you as a man of god by the spirit that there is an advantage in the kingdom that you can tap into you can outsource an advantage to correct the anomaly that the absence of these personalities have caused in your life let's pray father i have spoken to your people by the spirit you have moved in a dimension tonight with us that is most edifying especially for this season we honor you for your wisdom and how you walk in the midst of us we honor you for your speakings thank you for the impartations the deliverances the healings and everything you have done and are still doing my god i pray let this voice not be the voice of a man let let it be the voice of god let it be the voice of prophecy let it be the voice of destiny in the name of jesus i have spoken your counsel according to the wisdom of your spirit i ask that as your people listen to these teachings again and again may they hear what they've not heard now may they see what they've not seen personalize this teaching oh god when they are listening to the tapes and let it minister deeply to the fabric of their destiny let there be results from this teaching tonight and lord i decree and declare that you bless your people the book of revelation says blessed are ye for ye hear these things it says blessed is he that hears and reads these things i pray that the ears that will hear this from now and even many many years and decades from now may those ears be blessed may those eyes be blessed in the name of jesus lord i thank you because in the days that come we will credit our the excellency of our work to some of these truths we have learned tonight we give you the praise we honor you and we thank you continue to make this place a place of revelation a place of balance a place of the spirit we give you praise we give you honor for in the mighty name of jesus christ i pray amen and amen let me make the altar call right now thank you thank you very much thank you. you are here and sincerely please listen no, let's honor the people that need to come out here. You are here and you are yet to make Jesus Lord of your life. I don't need to cajole you. I don't need to coerce you this night. Please, those outside, minimize moving so that people can concentrate and listen. While I was preaching, the Holy Ghost was speaking to you. That this man of God is talking about you. About your destiny. About your family. And you know by the Spirit... And by the conviction of the Holy Spirit, that you are here and you are yet to make Jesus Lord of your life. That's category one. The second category, you may be here outside, inside, online, and you're saying, Apostle, I want to rededicate my life. Not after what I've heard this night. I don't want to go back the same way I came. If you are in any of these categories, inside and outside, our time is gone. Please, very, very quickly, I'd like you to boldly stand up on your feet and come and stand here. Don't wait for anyone to come first. Don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid. Koinonia, encourage them. They are coming by the Spirit. Overflow one, overflow two, overflow three. The extension to the road and those online. Very quickly. Please keep clapping. They are coming. Jesus is calling. Don't allow this moment pass you by. Coming out is not compulsory, but it is necessary for your destiny. Young and old, make your way. Come quickly. Keep clapping. Motivate them as they come. 
If you're coming from outside, please hurry up. Please hurry up. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. While those who are coming, God bless you. While they keep coming, um, look at me, please. You, you'll be praying in a moment, but I salute every single one of you, and I appreciate you for the boldness. It takes a lot of courage, psychologically speaking, to respond to a, an altar call like this, and I want to appreciate you for not frustrating the grace of God by coming out to make this commitment. Some of you are making this decision for the first time. Some of you are rededicating your lives truthfully. If you're outside and you're still coming, please come quickly. Come quickly. God bless you. Don't let anyone condemn you. Don't let the devil tell you you are so bad. God cannot receive you. That's the devil speaking. His language is love. His language is light. He ministers hope. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So I salute every one of you. You're making these decisions like I thought. Some of you are standing here, but you are not the one standing. A generation is standing prophetically in and through you. I want you to lift your right hand and repeat after me, not as though reciting a poem. Let it be from the depth of your heart. God bless you, sir. Come. Jesus is in this place, and I want you to say this convincingly. I want you to say this truthfully. Say, Lord Jesus. Say it again, Lord Jesus. I believe in you. That you are the son of God. Tonight, I have heard your word. And I have come to you to receive help. To receive grace. To receive your life. Therefore, I declare that from today and forever, Jesus is my Lord, my Savior, and my King. I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and I declare that I reign in life. I declare that from today I move forward ever and backwards never. I am a child of God. I am saved. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Jesus, thank you. As always, we will continue to thank you for the ones that you bring to be saved through this platform. It's our joy to continue to see souls saved truly. And we thank you for drawing these ones. No man can draw them except you call them. You have called them for the sake of your love for them, for the sake of their destinies. I pray that in the name that is above all names, the grace that is required to live victoriously in this kingdom... May you receive that grace right now. In the name of Jesus. Every guilt, every shame, every hurt, every pain, every disappointment, every discouragement, every hopelessness. I declare that it, it blows away like smoke before the wind. I declare that you start on a fresh page tonight. In the name of Jesus. I bless you with the blessings of heaven. And I declare that from today you will walk in victory. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Alaska de Basca Nakata Branda Catecatos, Cate Branda Catapacotosco to break a ticket at the The phase of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.